What's up guys, so in this tutorial I'm just going to be going over a really basic system for loading JSON data and storing it into a dictionary for use in your Godot project. Now this tutorial will reflect all the changes in Godot 4.0. There are a couple things which have been updated and changed, but this system will basically cover all of that so you don't need to worry about anything changing in Godot 4.0. Now for my JSON data, I actually recently started using a program called Gridless. So I do want to mention that this video is not sponsored by the creator of Gridless or anything. This is literally just me talking about this program because it's awesome. Some of you may know I used to use Google Sheets for all my like static data management, but Gridless is actually way better for things like items and dialogue systems where you'll need a bunch of data. And it's really easy to just create an interface essentially for creating the data, which is specific to your game project. So I think you can get Gridless on Steam or Itch. It is around $20 right now, I think, but I would highly recommend picking it up. If you are not using Gridless, uh, Google Sheets works as well. And I think I do have an outdated tutorial that shows you how to export all of your Google Sheets data into a JSON file. So I'll throw a card up in the video if I remember to do that. But you can just skip the, through this part and I'll catch you in the next section. But if you do have Gridless, you can just follow along. I'm going to add a few basic things for an item data setup here. So I'll have a new folder here called items. This will be a category. And then in this category, I can add something like the name of the item. I can add the the description and then I could do something like add a cost and also add a max stack in case you were to do like an inventory system and now we have a very basic setup for our items so if we go over to this button right up here we can add a new item I'm just gonna call this an apple uh, keep in mind that this will be the key used for the item, so I normally like to keep it lowercase just to reflect the ideal format. When you export though, I think it is possible to just convert everything to snake case, but I, I like to keep the format like this either way. And then for the actual display name of the item, you can stick that right in this name box here. So for the apple, we'll just call it apple, right, with the uppercase because it's the display name. And then for the description, just fill this in quick. And then the cost could be something like 10 and the max stack. And then we'll add a couple more items here just so we can test it out. Maybe like a crafting table, call it crafting table. Just add a description quick. Cost could be something higher and max stack of one. Now there is a bit of a glitch with this program. Uh, so when I go to actually export this, the UI is going to be extremely large and I can't rescale it for some reason. So I'm going to turn down the scale of the application really quick. Okay, this should work. So, sorry if you can't see this, I'll go over to the export tab at the top and I'll click export as. And you can see the options on the right hand side. I mean, you might not be able to see those, but I'll try to zoom in here. We're going to export it as a dictionary. Uh, the colors really don't matter since we don't have any color values in our sheet. And then we can just select only one language, which is English. If you are trying to convert your game to different languages, it's probably a good idea to right off the bat, add this extra layer into your dictionary for each different language. But for now, this is just fine. And then we will click export. I'm just gonna choose a folder quick. We're gonna throw this in this projects folder and we're actually gonna make a new folder in here called data inside of our project. We're gonna save it as static data.json and you can see it got exported. Now that that's exported, this is where we can actually go into our Godot project and get everything imported and stored into a dictionary for use in game. So inside of Godot, the first thing we gotta do is create a new folder in here. We're just gonna add a singletons folder and inside of here we'll add a new script this will be called static data.gd and we need to make sure we preload this so go up into the project settings go to auto load and select the static data click add make sure it's enabled and we're going to close out of this so right off the bat we can go into this script and first thing we need to add at the top is our actual item data so we'll make a new variable called item data and we'll set this equal to a new dictionary just an empty one so this will essentially be the variable which is stored in this 
singleton, which any object can access to get any static data that we have stored to it. So if you're trying to load like an item cost or description, or you're trying to display anything, you would call static data for the singleton dot item data to get the variable. And then you can get anything inside of the dictionary here. So I just find that pretty convenient. And then we can actually make a function to load a file and then return the result which can then be stored to this. Next up, we need to actually provide the path to the JSON file here. So we're gonna make a new variable. This will be called data file path, and we will set it equal to a new string. You can actually just go into the file explorer, right click the file, click copy path, and then just paste it right here. And then we'll select it all and put it into a string format. So now we can create the function to load the file. So this will be called function load JSON file, and it will require a file path, and this will be a string. And inside of here, the first thing we need to do is check if the file exists so that we know if we should attempt to load it or not. So we'll say if file access, and the file access class is essentially the object which you can use to open or save any files in Godot. So we need to use this class to call the method file exists and then we will pass in the file path here and this will obviously return true if the file exists we'll pass for now but down here we'll say else which means the file does not exist we'll print a quick error which will be file doesn't exist now right up here we first need to open the data file so we'll write a new variable called data file and we'll set this equal to file access again and this time we'll write dot open and we'll open the file on the file path with file access dot read so now we'll be reading this file now with this file we can actually add a new variable which is going to be the parsed result of the file so this will be called parsed results and it'll be equal to json for the json class dot parse string and inside of here we just need to pass in the data file dot get as text now this will store the parsed file in a text format to this variable and all we have to do then is return it but first off i do want to check if it is the right format so we'll say if the parsed result is a dictionary then we will return the parsed result and then we can say else we'll print another error and this will be error reading file and it will basically be printed if the file is not parsed correctly or if it's a different format so now when we return this parsed result that'll be the dictionary that we'll be assigning to this item data variable so normally you want to do this upon runtime so inside of this singleton we can actually just call the ready function and then inside of here the first thing we want to do is set the item data equal to load json file and then we just pass in this data file path and that is all we need for the system so if you go ahead and run the game everything should load correctly and if you go into the remote tab up here select the static data singleton you can see inside of the properties that there is an item data variable which is a dictionary and inside of here we have all of our item data so very basic again um, there were a few things that have changed since the previous version of Godot that I just wanted to mention so this is kind of just an updated tutorial going over this also I guess I'll add this part quick but if you don't know how to actually access this data just keep in mind it's literally just a dictionary so on this world node we could add a new script and let's say when we started the game we wanted to print a specific property of an item really easy just call the ready function if you'd want to access an item property you just need to grab the static data singleton which is available to all the nodes since it's a singleton, right? So we'll call static data dot item data. And then inside of here, we just need to get the specific item we're looking for, which in this case would be Apple. And then we could get another key, which would be, let's say the description, and we could just print this, right? Okay, so uh, this was a typo here. Um, apparently it exported the description key with a capital D which is not ideal. I forgot to convert it to lowercase, but um, this will access the Apple's description and print the value, which you can see down here, a small tasty red fruit. So you can see how easy it is to get your item data 
or really anything if you're doing like dialogue or like a resource for a loot table or drop rates or anything. You can really easily import this and it's pretty straightforward to use it. So just thought I'd throw this video out here just as a quick tutorial for this kind of thing since this is really helpful in most games. Now also I do want to mention that you should not use this system, specifically JSON files, for any save data because it's just not really efficient in the Godot case. So I'll hopefully get around to a tutorial on on custom resources for save data soon, but I just wouldn't recommend um, using JSON files for save data since there's a better way to do it in Godot. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.